Uh, hello, we're back right now with the uh, screen back the way it was when we uh, left it last time. The only thing I've done is I've added two layers, and uh, I will show you what how you add a layer. So I am going to create a layer. We're going to call this one hidden. It will be hidden lines. Lines that are behind what we're looking at. And we'll make it red. And it will be a dash. We will get to the width later on. Okay. Now, I usually create layers that are uh, my construction layers while I'm drawing the drawing. And so I called this one bogus green because it's going to be a green line. And it's bogus. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do, and I need to tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. On the main menu here, I'm going to draw a line. And then the type of line I'm going to do is a horizontal line. And I'm at... Now I have to choose the position, and I'm at what's called free positioning, which means I can move this cursor anywhere I want to to create the line. So we've created it. Okay, I'm now going to go back, and I'm going to create a line that what used to be called offset. Uh, this line is going to be 0.62 and parallel with the existing line. And once I get down there close, you see that line appears. I have it, and now I'm going to create another line 1.5 inches from the previous line. And as you can see, things are getting really small. So let's go ahead and we'll click this little button up here at the top called Zoom. My cursor changed to a magnifying glass. I'm going to draw a little window around the area that I want to zoom into. And uh, once I've zoomed in, I hit Escape. And I'm now back into my line menu, it looks like. I'm going to create a vertical line. Now, this vertical line, I don't want it to be free positioned. I want it to be exactly on the end point of one of those others. So, on the position thing, I do snap to end. And you see that my cursor will only snap to just those points. I'm going to make it right here. Now, I'm going to do a uh, another offset. And this offset will be at 2.25 inches. And as I offset, I want to offset to one of those to the vertical line, so I do that. Okay, now I'm ready to start cutting some of these lines. I want to trim some things down to get it more like what I want it to look like. So I just keep hitting back till I get to the main menu. And then I go to Modify, and I'm going to use this Trim function. Okay, Trim function comes in several steps. The first step is you have to select the limiting entity, and it tells you down at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen what that is, what the next step is. So I click on the line that I want to trim to, and then, and you see the line change just a little bit. Hopefully that shows up on YouTube. And uh, now I click on the lines that I want to uh, trim to that. And I have got it. You right click to get out of the uh, limiting entity. I'm now ready to go back to lines. I need to make another vertical line. But this vertical line I'm going to make at the center, which is snap to middle points. It's going to be at the center of this line. And now I've pretty well got my little my little bracket's starting to be boxed in. I'm ready to draw some circles now. So I'm going to draw a circle center with radius. And there is no circle with a diameter. So you're always, unfortunately, having to do uh, radiuses. Okay, my first radius is going to be... Uh, happens to be what I've got punched in there for... 4.4219 and uh, I want to go to an intersection so I click the intersection and that's where I put my center point. My next circle is going to be 0.82 radius. It's around the same center point so 
there it is. I am now done with the circles temporarily. Okay, now we're going to draw one more line. This line's a new function. And it's from center to tangent of a circle. And I think I'm going to zoom in a little bit more to do this. Okay, we've zoomed in. We'll escape. We'll go certain point to tangent. To first, I'm going to do an end point to the right here. I'll go to free positioning. Choose my circle. I'm going to do the same thing again. Specify point. We're going to go to uh, end point. I'm going to do it on this side. And now I'm going to go free positioning and position it to the circle. Okay, I got one more line. I might as well get it done while I'm doing it. And that's going to be one from two points. And I'm going to go intersection. And I want to go to that joining, that tangent point between the circle and the uh, other. Okay, I'm ready to start doing a bunch more cutting and trimming. So we're going to go back to modify menu. And I'm going to trim this thing again. So I hit the trim function. This is going to be my limiting entity. I want to keep this part of that line. This part of that line. Okay. Let's change some of these line types now so that I start knowing what's real and what's not. So we go to Modify Menu, uh, if I get there, Modify Menu, we're going to do a Change edit, edit Entity Attributes, and the entities that we're going to change is this, 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 and this right now. And uh, continue with the action, and we're going to make all of those level 0, or layer 0. So they're all white lines. So I know those are going to stay. Okay. I also need to change this one here. And I think I'm back at my main menu again. Yep. And I'm going to change that one to level zero. Because that's a real hole that goes all the way through. Now i got a problem with this this big circle. Part of it's going to be seen and part of it is uh, invisible through the, uh, it's hidden on the other side of this thing. There's several ways to take care of that. The one that I know the best that I use is that I'm going to copy that line, that circle and this line where I'm going to break it. So I'm going to do a copy. click on both things and now it's asking me how I want to position it and I don't really care so I'm going to do free positioning I put it somewhere where I can work with it and I am going to keep the original okay one of the problems with that is that uh, with the copy function is that it leaves things selected and uh, I kind of hate that so I'm going to deselect everything now, we're back to modify, we're going to do our old buddy trim. You see, you're going to use the heck out of trim. I'm going to trim right here, and I'm going to keep the top part. Deselect the, uh, the limiting entity, uh, entity, and I'm going to trim this one, but I'm going to keep the bottom part. Okay, I can go ahead and delete those two bogus lines right now, so we will. Okay, I'm going to change entity of this top one because I can see it. So I'm going to make it uh, layer 0. This one here is going to be a hidden line. And this line here is going to be hidden as well. So we'll just go ahead and change them both at the same time. And we'll change them to hidden. And now I need to move this over. So we're going to go back to copy, and we are going to uh, choose, and you select all the items you're going to copy, then you have to do that next step. We are going to copy to center points, which is right here. I'll 
copy from this center point to the center point of those. And we're going to delete the original this time. Okay, again I have to deselect. And I hate the fact that it does it that way. But hey, I didn't write the software. And they probably got reasons they did. Okay, we now have pretty much my device. I need to change the two center lines. And I need to uh, kind of limit those. So we're going to do a, a circle. This circle is a center with a point. So I click it. It asks me first to specify the center. And the center is going to be right there. And now I'm ready to do the, uh, the outside point. And what happened? Something went wrong. So let's go back now. Start all over. Circle. Center with point. We're going to go to, uh, we'll do intersection this time. Something is acting really weird. Looks as if the software is starting to hang up on me for some reason. Circle. Center with point. I'm going to go intersection. Okay, and now for my second point, I'm going to go out here to what looks good to me. That created it. And uh, now I am going to trim this thing. So we're back to our old buddy trim. Trim acts funny with circles. And there's just nothing. It just is the way it is. So we're going to trim that side, but you see I can't trim this side. It trimmed the opposite end of what I thought it would. <laughs> uh, but it is trimming. So. It still doesn't want to trim that one. I select this. And that time it did. I can delete the. Uh, outer circle. We delete it. And now we'll go back. Need to change the entities of these two to center line. And we'll change those to center. Okay. I need to modify my center. So we're going to do that. We got a lot of modifying to do here. So we're going to go to center line. And I left it black and white. I'd like to have that some color. I'm going to make it red. Now, I got one other problem with that. You see that it's very fine. You really can't tell what type of line it is. So we're going to modify center again. And we're going to uh, change the width of it, which also changes the spacing. That looks a lot better. I think I'm going to go a little bit coarser than that. So we go to 0.18. And I just picked those ISO numbers just because they work. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can pick any of those numbers there. Okay, we also need to do it to the hidden line. And we'll make it exactly the same as what we did for the center line. And now the drawing is looking pretty daggone close to done. Okay, the only thing I need to do now is save it. So we will save this thing. You see right now it's called Unnamed Document. So I will save it. And I will call it part two because this is this tutorial part two. We'll save it. It's going to save it in DXF format. And you see now that it has a name up here. Um, that's pretty much the end of part two. Uh, we'll continue on uh, with the next step. We have the drawing saved so we can move ahead. Thank you for listening.